Do you want to learn how to add screenshot functionality to your program like this? Stay tuned and let's take a look. All right, so starting us off, I just have a 2D scene here and I just threw a bunch of sprites all over. That way we have something something to take a picture of for our screenshot. And I have gone into my project and I've created a screenshot button. You can, of course, set this to whatever it is you want. In my case, I'm just going to use the key P. And if we head on into our script, we're going to use three variables for this. We're going to use capture, date, and time. And, of course, you can leave them up top here. Or, if you really want, you can go ahead and stick them inside of our process down here. If you're not going to need these outside. There we go. So when we press our button, these variables will be created and they'll be temporary. So if you don't need them outside, we can just use them inside. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to start with uh, getting the date and time. And for that, we're going to use one more temporary variable. And we're just going to call this date time. And we will set this equal to OS dot get date time. And it, whether or not you need to set this to true or false or whatever, this is up to you to uh, mess around with and uh, find out. But what you're going to do from here is we then need to, or we're going to set our date and time variable. And the reason why we're using a date and a time is we're going to use this to have unique names for each of our screenshots. So you could always uh, prompt the user to put in a name for the screenshot. That's perfectly fine, but as a default here, I'm just going to use the date and time. So we're going to set date. And we're going to set that equal to a string of three placeholders, like so three string placeholders with dashes in between. And what we're going to fill in here is going to be date, time. And of course, you can set this in any any order that you wish. But I'm going to set it to the day, followed by date, time, dot, whoops, dot, month, and date, time, dot, year. So we now have a date that's going to be shown as day, month, year. If you want to have it month, day, year, or year, month, date, whatever you want to do, perfectly fine. And that's all up to you. And we're going to have a second, a second line that's almost identical to this. Only this will be for our time. And we're going to set this to hour. And I hope, I hope I get this right. It's not hours. Uh, but hour, minute, and second. Here we go, like so. So now we have a date and a time. So now we need to do the actual capture. Now, if I were to run this, and we head on over to the remote section here, you see we have uh, all different things here, but our root here is a viewport. And that's what you're going to use to take a screenshot we're gonna get this viewport and if you have other viewports in your scene and you want to get uh, a screenshot of some of one of those specifically you can certainly do that or we're gonna use the default one here but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that and we're gonna get the texture that is being shown there so we're gonna basically get that frame of data and that's what we're gonna want to save so to do this, we're going to go ahead and set capture. Remember our other variable. And we're going to set that to get viewport uh, dot get texture. And then with, once we have that texture, we want to get the data of that texture. So our capture now contains all of this information. Now, when uh, Gato here, or Godot, again, however you want to say this, uh, saves an image, it's actually upside down uh, when it's taken from the viewport. So what we need to do is we then need to flip it uh, vertically 
which would be on the uh the y the y axis so we're just going to do capture dot flip y so now our picture is facing the right side up and now we want to save this image now depending on your viewport and what you're capturing you may or may not have a transparent background so what what we're going to do to ensure this is we're going to save this as a png that way if you do have a transparent background you'll be sure to keep that now in our case the default background is going to be this gray box that we have here but if we were using a different a different viewport that we added into our scene and not the default one here we would certainly have transparency as a default so what we're going to do is we're going to call capture dot save png and all we're going to put in here is the path in our file name so as a default that's safe on all platforms we can save it to the user directory plus our file name which is going to be two string placeholders separated by a dash and we're going to put dot png and as you would expect for our placeholders here we're just going to pass in date and time now if you want to find uh, your location of this and you're not 100% sure where it is we can do os dot shall open and for an argument pass in os dot get user data directory and that'll open up your user directory this user colon slash slash for you now I already have mine open but that's fine I'll leave it here anyway and now when you go ahead and uh, run your scene press your screenshot button I'll just bring this back up on the screen you hit your screenshot button boom now we have a screenshot and every time we take a new one it's going to have a new name ensuring that all of our files will always be unique and never overwritten allowing the user to come in here uh, later on in the future after they're done playing and uh, take a look at their screenshots to let them decide which they want to keep what which ones they want to get rid of and what they want to rename all right so it's as simple as that to add a screenshot functionality into your game and with that i'll see you guys in the next video and if there's anything you need help with or a feature or mechanic or something that you want to see or need help with leave a comment down below